You are listening to episode 310, Draft. We're going to talk about the draft that is really confusing to a lot of young people nowadays. Also known as Selective Service. Enacted by the United States government on the 18th of May, 1917. And we're going to dive into the history. It'll be a little bit boring, but I think it's well worth it. But before I get into the history, I want to remind everything, everybody, about something that Ronald Reagan, President Ronald Reagan used to say. And it was somewhat of a joke. And he used to say the scariest words that an American citizen can hear is somebody from the government saying, hello, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Hold on to your hats. You'll understand in a minute. Selective service was enacted, as I said, in 1917. Their website for selective service for our young people, you can get your crayons and write it on cardboard box, is SSS dot, not just a dot, don't write DOT, SSS dot period, don't write the period, just period, gov, G-O-V. And there you'll register if you want to, but you should because it could be a felony. And on their website, it kind of explains the duty that one has. In fact, one of the captions is, it's your country. Take one minute to protect it. In other words, just fill out the form. It only takes a minute. Do it. Do it now. (laughs) That's the guy in charge. Right. But let's take a deeper dive into the history. And as I said, now the Selective Service, funny enough, Wikipedia, I don't know if you should trust Wikipedia all the time, but Wikipedia is actually stating here on the website that Selective Service is an independent agency of the United States government. Independent. What the hell does that mean? Are you part of the government or are you not? And if you are, who's supervising you? Or is anybody supervising you? That's scary language. Scary. All right. So it's an independent agency of the United States government that maintains a database of registered males. You know what that means. They were born with exactly U.S. citizens and other U.S. residents potentially subject for military conscription. The draft. This is what it says. It says the draft. So it talks about now, it continues. I'm not going to bore you with the rest of it about volunteer corps, but even though it's a volunteer service, you're obligated at the age of 18 to 25. In other words, if you didn't do it at 18, you got 19, 20, 21, follow follow me here, 22, 23, 24, and 25 to catch up. Boom, I finally got it. I did it. And you wouldn't be in violation of the law. But if you didn't do it, it would be a violation of the law. So keep that in mind because we're going to talk about that at the end of the podcast. All right. So if you think that that act in 1917 was the last one, you would be wrong because politicians love to F around so much with this act. They keep on several times, many, many times they had to play with the draft. So, in 1917, when they actually enacted 
the Selective Service for the first time, it was following a U.S. declaration of war against Germany, which was done on 6th of April, 1917. And because of the failure of the U.S. Army at the time to meet the target of expanding one million men in military service, Woodrow Wilson, the president of the time, and Congress, the 65th Congress, passed the Selective Service Act. So the Army didn't have to try to find a million people. You were obligated to write your name, address, and all your pertinent information, and then the government could just pick the million people. Made it easy. But that wouldn't be the last time our politicians played around with this. They did it again in 1940. 1940 to 1947, the Selective Training and Service Act of 1940 was passed by Congress. The 16th of September, 1940, establishes the first peacetime prescription of the United States history. It required all men ages 18 and 64. 18 and 64. Pay attention to register and select a service. And men typically completed a DTS form, first military draft card, and off they went. Over 49 million cards were collected in 1940. A lot of people signed up for the Second World War. And we know in Second World War, the enemy was Germany and Japan. And, you know, you'll follow. You're, you're picking this up pretty good. But if you think that was the end of it, you would be wrong again. You see, in 1948 to 1969, they played around with it again. This time it would be called the Selective Service Act of 1948. How do you distinguish them? Well, at the end, it says 1948. Enacted in June of that calendar year, a new separate system, the basis of the modern system, modern system back in 48, all men 18 and older had to register with Selective Service, all men between the ages of 18 and 25, 64 guys, 64-year-old men were somewhat off the hook. We'll explain that in a minute and would be eligible for draft in service a requirement of 21 months, or they could serve 36 consecutive months in the reserve. So in 1948, 21 months straight through active duty or reserve for 36 months, which means you a weekend warrior type of thing, okay? It was used uh, during the Korean War, and in 1963, President John F. Kennedy signed an executive order 1119 in granting an exemption for married men between the ages of 19 and 26. See, they continuously playing. So now if you're married, you don't have to sign up, you know, you got a wife and maybe kids and yeah, you're good. Now, this would not be the last time they play around with it. 1969 to 1975, President Richard Nixon signed the amendment to the Military Service Act of 1967. So he adds on to the one in 67 and establishes a random selective lottery, the first draft lottery, and it talks about will be held December 1st of 1969. So this is the basis of how they would select and draft people into the Vietnam War. Not a very popular war either. And we're gonna get into that 
towards the end about a popular war. 1975, our Congress and the president at the time broke out a crayon and a cardboard box because they're going to redo this all over again. You see, on 29 March 1975, President Gerald Ford, whose son Stephen had earlier failed to register in the draft as required, Stevie effed up. He signed the proclamation 4360, terminating, terminating, finished, kaput, no more. Terminating registration procedures under the Military Selective Service Act, eliminating the registration required for all 18 to 25 year old male citizens. Done. Stevie screwed it up. It's over. Now, how many thought that was the end? No, it's not the end. Remember, President Ronald Reagan said the scariest thing ever is when you hear somebody from the government said, hello, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Scariest words ever. 1980. 2nd of July, 1980, President Jimmy Carter signed Placer Relation 4771 and the registration of the Military Service Act in response to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. So the Soviet Union, which is, you know, kind of Russia and all those little, all the communist countries they used to have, they used to be called the Soviet Union. For a younger generation that has no idea what I'm talking about. And they invaded Afghanistan. That's right. They were there before we were. And um, it scared the pants out of Jimmy Carter as president. And he wouldn't act selective service all over again. What, what a coincidence. We had nothing to do with that war, but it scared him so much. Afghanistan, so far away. He said, holy shit, that's so close. I better enact the draft all over again. And he did. And um, I don't know if we're a better nation as a result of it, but anyway, he ended up doing it. You go on to believe that the U.S. House of Representatives presented a bill in February of 2016, a bill to abolish, remove, kaput. We're back to that again. Selective service systems was introduced by the House of Representatives, uh, H.R. 4523, would end draft registration, eliminate authorities of the present president to order anyone to register for the draft. Well, they didn't work. On 9 June 2016, a similar bill was introduced in the United States Senate called the Muhammad Ali Volunteer Service Act. And that was 27 April 2016. The House Armed Service Committee voted to add an amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act in fiscal year 2017 to extend the authority for draft registration to women. This shit is getting complicated. That kind of would fail because, you see, women could not see combat. So why are you getting drafted? Hmm. So that went out the window. The House and Senate Conference Committee for the National Defense Authorization Act in fiscal year 2017 removed the provision from the House version of the bill and would have authorized the president to order women as well as men to register in selective service system, but added a new section to create the National Commission on Military, National, and Public Service. That's a mouthful. The provision was enacted into law on the 23rd, December, 2016. You confused? Because I am. Okay. Let's keep going here. In February 2019, 
a challenge to the Military Service Act, was provide, w w which pro provides that all male only draft by the National Coalition of, for Men was deemed unconstitutional by Judge Gary H. Miller, United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas. And he said, uh, 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 that's a bunch of bull. So he pulled the plug. December 2019, a bipartisan, that means both parties together. Oh, shit. I wasn't allowed to do this, but I'm sorry. Anyway, Selective Service Repeal Act. Hmm. The bill to repeal the Military Service Act and abolish the Selective Service System, H.R. 5492, was introduced to the House of Representatives. And um, I put the two goofs that presented this. The bill was reintroduced in both House, H.R. 2509, and the Senate, 1139, that that's what the number of the bills, on 14 April 2021. They won't leave this shit alone, will they? January 2020, Select Service website crashed following the U.S. airstrike on Baghdad International Airport. Did you know that? Americans were so concerned about what was happening in Iraq and Baghdad January 20th, Selective Service website crashed. Don't ask. I don't know. And um, it goes on babbling, and now you know why our Congress now is trying to do this crap all over again because they want to add women. So you have to say why. When I was 18, I was a senior in high school in 1982. My high school provided every male that was in the class a selected service form. You had to fill it out, sign it, and give it back to the teacher. Now, if you were not seven, I think you had to be 17, 18 to fill it out, right? So if you were younger than that, you needed mommy and daddy to help you fill it out. But I got mine. I recently posted it on Facebook. I filled it out in 1982. And I was ready to go wherever the hell they were going to send me. But they didn't send me anywhere because they didn't call me. Now, this is the most interesting. I'm going to end with this. Gender. So remember, there's a big thing between male and female. Males, they're born with a pecker. They're dudes. They're allowed to go into military service and combat. Females, women, no packer. They don't see combat action. But they can serve as a volunteer. But now this is really going to get heavy now. Because they're going to talk about gender. Sex, gender, distension, transgender women, transgendered men. Boy, this is complicated. So if you were born a man, yeah, I'm not, I can't, you can't make this shit up, and you change your pecker, you still got to register. Okay, you can't, you got to register. But if you're a woman, and you became a man, but you can't, you don't have a pecker, you think you have one, you can't serve. So it's even more confusing because remember our Supreme Court justice that said, what the hell's a woman? So the government can't even define what it's writing in the law. 
I'm not going to continue reading this because politics is so disgusting it makes you want to vomit after a while. But what we can say, there's a reason that they want all these American citizens to register. Now, there's some language about illegals and some rhetoric and some noise about aliens. I don't know if they're talking about the ones up in Mars, because I don't, I don't think we're allowed to use the word alien anymore. But anyway, that's what they're talking about. It makes it even more confusing. So this is why the politicians are trying to get this stuff passed because it's a headliner. They're trying to get a list of whatever, a million, two million, whatever number it is. Now, the original act was done in 1917. Why are we playing around with every time? Because every time the government had a different objective. The objective now is to get women involved in combat. It's about control, folks. Our demis love to control people. Remember when the House and Senate was trying to repeal selective service? They were pushed by Republicans, but it failed. See, Democrats are the party of war. They'll tell you they're not, but they are. Remember what Joe Biden said in the debate? No military service personnel ever died in my watch. It's fucking sad. Forgot the 13 that died in Afghanistan. Joe forgot to tell them. So the bottom line is this. Selective service has been around forever. It's been played around with the government forever. The government always has an objective. And we have to remember Ronald Reagan when he said, hello, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. The scariest words ever heard by a U.S. citizen. And what that tells you is Hold on to your hat. There's something sinister in play. As we continue to allow our Congress and our Senate to run amok, we're at fault because we're not scrutinizing the people that are going up there. That's the problem. So here's a couple of things that we covered. Must register to 18 to 25. Must, shall. Biblical words, have to do it. Older than 26 could, now remember, for you to become older than 26, you had to be 18 to 24. You got you follow me, okay. So that means you should have done it. Okay, except if you crossed the border the other day and you're 27, and you don't even know what's going on. So it doesn't apply to you. You can, you know. Ride motorbikes in New York City and do whatever you want. But for the rest of us smokes, if you're an American citizen, when you were 18 and 25, you had to do it. So let's say you're 27 now. You would be in selective service. The older folks could be selected from the list that they did for specialized service. Not military service necessarily. Maybe you have a special skill, such as medical. You're a nurse, you're a doctor. They can swallow you up and take you into selective service draft. You have a unique skill. They need that skill. They can suck you up and spit you up. And the gender thing, I don't think we can ever figure that one out. I think we're going to have to go back to the biblical application. Pecker, dude. No pecker, you're not a dude. It's that easy. But the politicians can't figure it out. 
Up next, episode 311, 311, we're going to talk about what's all the noise. It's about the Miami-Dade sheriff election. It's got a whole list of characters that are running to be sheriff. What's so important with being a sheriff? There's a lot more sinister going on down in Miami that people know about. Los Angeles was a very interesting place back in 2016 when their sheriff took over, and he was a Democrat, but he was a centered Democrat, right in the middle. Well, the lefties didn't want him. They shoved him out. They put some kook there now. It's about control, folks. And our next episode, What's All the Noise? is about control. These people may vote, for the wrong person. And what's a red state will continue to stay red, but that area of Miami-Dade will be on fire, turning blue. You know when a fire gets really, really hot, like a welder, welder's gun, it's blue. That should give you an idea. So that's up July 10th. If you're looking for a good gun smith, Pistol Pete, the gunsmith down in Miami, he's your guy. He was my guy for many, many years. His information is down in the bottom of the show notes. You can give Pete a call. He'll tell you how you can send your gun to him legally without any issues. He will make it look like brand new under your specifications, and you're gonna love it. The most important thing is that gun's gonna work. How do I know? Pistol Pete was my gunsmith when I was active. He kept me alive for many years. So that's why I recommend him. If you're in the New Jersey area, Kilo Sierra, his information is down in the bottom of notes. Also, remember, Fantastic, fabulous information happening up in New Jersey. Fantastic things. They just, like recently, passed CCW, Carrying Concealed Weapon Permit for New Jersey Citizens. Permit. It just happened. And Kilo Sierra's teaching those courses. Gave him a call. And if you're down in the South Florida area, Triple A, Triple A, that's three A's, A-A-A, gun safety with our friend Amalvo down there. Give him a call. His information down at the bottom of the show notes and give you some real, real good training. And don't forget Tampa Bay, RaiderCopTacTAC.com. That would be us. As always, continue to pray for yourself because without you, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your family, your community, the law enforcement agencies that serve you. And most importantly, continue to pray for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike. I'll see you downrange.